has been making, of course, uh, the spaces in the editorial pages of the Standard today, and it's all about the, that pronouncement by the president. And he ha you have three cards there. It says, white, move out. Yellow, go to jail. Red, fly to heaven. And this is what we're discussing here, holding court with Professor uh, Fred Ogola, who is an economist, also Professor Gitele Naituli, who is a governance and policy analyst. Also, we have Kipruto Rapkirwa, who is a governance and policy analyst as well, and Dr. Isaac Green Kalua, who is uh, the party leader of Green Thinking Action Party. All right, let's just hear from uh, Kipruto Rapkirwa, because uh, on this podium as well, you, or on this set, you've actually spoken before and you say, you know, Kenyans be prepared. Maybe in the next few months, in the next three months, Right? For a hallmark of a dictatorship. So, hacking back to those uh, words that you had said before and in comparison to what the president was making with the broadside declaration, what is the estimation? Well, uh, I think we've known each other with uh, President William Ruto. And when I say those things, uh, I did not say out of uh, malice or ill will. Uh, at times when you are dealing with a situation or an entity, you must understand what the people in leadership call ontology, the state of affairs of that particular individual. And I've known him sufficiently that uh, you would want to solve things and solve things quickly without necessarily adhering to the procedure as laid down. In many ways, uh, you would want to do things what we call in Kiswahili Kienyeji. Then you resolve the issues part, uh, later. I, I liken his leadership uh, to that of President Moy, where he used to issue an order, and the order is now resolved through some kind of arrangement of chairs internally. And uh, for Kenyans to understand, uh, or to be reminded, is that Kibaki, for the eight years of his uh, leadership, he used the same old constitution President Moy had used for 24 years with certain amendments. And for the eight years Kibaki was the president, there was no amendment until Constitution 2010 that sort of uh, removed the old constitution and brought in the current constitution that we are using. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that it is not really about the document called the Constitution. It is the style of the, an individual who chooses to be so impatient as to make some of these declarations, which is basically populist. The president is campaigning for 2027 because those things can be done from Marambi, can be done from State House, can be done through various ministries and various arms of government and we achieve the same results, if not better. But why he has to go to, to Mumias to make those statements is to ensure that people feel that he's the man who made the changes that would have been made at that particular time. And yet he's fully aware that the sugar industry is just beyond uh, just the ministries, beyond the factories. It is something deep-rooted. The corruption in the sugar industry started in the 60s. That's why there are billions of shillings owed to the sugar industry uh, or sugar industry owes various institutions, internal and external. And some things you cannot just change overnight. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to really to, to go to the bottom of it, to ask yourselves why was sugar industry set up in Western Kenya for that particular reason? And those reasons, once they are clear to you, then you'll be able to resolve them uh, by looking at a schedule that is reasonable, and it's also effective. As uh, Professor Gola said, when you talk of removing cartels, every institution, every government or administration has its own cartels. And when you are removing cartels from the previous regime, you are replacing them with your own cartels. Mm. And at times, some of these decisions that are rushed and without procedure, they are meant to open ways for corruption. You'll be told we are trying to remove corruption, but it is a way of creating room for a corrupt individuals in this regime to get businesses and continue. Remember when they were create, cleaning the debris in Iran, <laughs> Iraq, it was the government of America 
through the, the, the vice president's company that was responsible for cleaning debris in Iran. What am I trying to say? Every regime has the people who supported it and they will look for ways of creating businesses for them. So when you hear him getting annoyed, possibly some people's businesses are being uh, uh, suffocated and he needs to get rid of Rai and bring in some other people who do the same business and create a problem. That's why we should insist on procedure, institutional changes, whether it is a court of law, however long it takes, use the court of law. Use the CID if there is somebody who has committed a crime. Finally, when you say those who are corrupt, you can go to heaven, it means uh, the president has declared heaven as the regime, as the area for the corrupt. And therefore, if you are corrupt, you have higher chances of going to heaven, which is almost sacrilege. It's almost going against the faith, because we all believe, even those of us who are not so good, we believe that those who go to heaven are people who are angelic, they are clean, they go in white clothes, not in any other color, not green, not blue, not purple, not maroon. So it worries me when the president himself tells all Christians of this nation that any corrupt person, one of the roots is to go to heaven. Now, also, when you tell us that uh, you get out of the country, how about those of us who are Kenyans? And even some of these people, they may have different extraction, but their parents who are here, their grandparents who are here, and they are businessmen, and they are Kenyans by right. And you cannot therefore remove them out of Kenya because you don't agree with them. I leave it there. All right, talking about colors, <laughs> let, let's, let's introduce the green color here on this podium as well, that uh, maybe it stands a chance. Uh, how, how did you read Doctor? my mind? I wanted to tell uh, my senior and my in-law that uh, green is one of the acceptable colors Colour that heaven. will go to heaven, okay. not just white. <laughs> 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 I've not seen it. I've not seen it gold. anywhere in the description of, uh, of the heavens that yeah, <laughs> it will be the gold and uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, let, let, let me let me agree with the sentiments that have been made by different uh, leaders from the civil society, uh, from my colleagues who condemn the statements uh, that have been said. Uh, regarding the three uh, Mambo ni Matatu and also appreciate the sentiments in a very profound manner. What I would like to bring out is the other way and the other side of things because the ball, as you know, I always believe there is another way of looking at things and life is made to be so interesting and you appreciate it the more whenever you think about the other side uh, where could this person be standing because we do not have a monopoly of ideas and god has given us tremendous opportunity to think and to do things differently and uh, starting with the kamba saying that means when i say the cow or the goat is fat i did not mean that it be slaughtered uh, and therefore there, there, there is much more that goes beyond that. Let me say that this is a tactic that is acceptable globally, that is also used, uh, one of scaring, one of sending a message, and uh, one of the reasons is to establish dominance the optics of things when you're out there in the public people want to really feel that the president is here he can say things that are not the normal ones and the things that we want to see that is a kirgit is uh, when when you go to the luya community he has the little angle range of meaning that is really you understand what i'm talking about so that dominance is very important for a leader uh, of a country to portray to the people that he leads. Secondly, there is the importance and the message sending of maintaining uh, uh, dominance uh, in, the, in the space and control 
uh, if I may. There is also the importance of sending a very strong message that can inspire people to do good. And finally, uh, motivating compliance. Because when you're scared, just like uh, the parents of the old, they would spit some saliva on some space and send a child to the market and say, if, you do, if the, the, the saliva dries up before you get here, then you're in trouble. And you could not anticipate the trouble until you come back uh, to find the, the, the saliva dried or not dried. So that, that is a tactic that is acceptable in one way or another. But also that does not mean that what my colleagues are saying is wrong. I'll give you an example during the elections. Our party, which I am the party leader, was the only party in the Republic of Kenya since independence to say that any member who wishes to become uh, uh, a part of the party and uh, get to the people for votes must have one additional thing over and above the chapter six that is required. What was it? Get a letter from the church or the mosque or the temple to say that you are actually vying on their behalf and they know you. We lost a lot of members. And I know very well that every vote in a political party counts. In fact, as it is today, every vote is amounting to funding of 15 shillings. So you can imagine I would have gotten every vote that I needed to have more funds in the party. And there was every reason for everyone who wanted to, uh, to, to vie as a political party uh, aspirant to try and influence the party officials to say, please allow me, uh, we are okay. But without the letter, nobody did. Mm -hmm. And I, we lost many people, many friends. And later on, it is actually last week that I confirmed by, by someone uh, from a church saying, how would you ask us to give so and so uh, a letter? when we know very well that he got to the county and uh, he within six months eight months he had bought a house he had uh, bought the most expensive car he was already building a, a plot in town how would we have given that person really uh, uh, um, a letter to recommend him to be vying on our behalf so i i want to say over and above what my colleagues are talking about mm -hmm. which i align to it is also an acceptable tactic in leadership, in politics, to send a message. And again, it, it, it is you may, about whether it can be implemented or not is neither here nor there. Uh, the message is home, and he has repeated it two times, three times, to say, Mambo ni matatu. And therefore, it depends on what you want to achieve at that particular time. And Kenya is so polarized that things, people take things very easy, People run into trouble very easily, and people repeatedly steal. Mm. You know the sugar factory. I know the sugar factory so well, and we have discussed this here before. In 1998, 1999, 2000, 2001, and 2002, I was working in that sector. Things that happen in our sugar industry is mind-boggling. The eels that are done in that place, the fleezing of the money by, uh, by uh, institutions and individuals to the farmers. The farmers in Mumias are suffering. Their kids don't even go, get to school. The level of stress from what used to be Busia outgrowers into the Zoya outgrowers, into the Soins that uh, are no longer there, into the Moroni that is already uh, in, in, in deathbed, into the Chemelils of this world, into all these other institutions. It is terrible. Parents are suffering. The Kenya Sugar Board and what it used to be in supporting this sector it's no longer there. People are suffering. And therefore, and money has been pumped in those institutions. Every now and then, talking about even Webuye and all these institutions. Why wouldn't the president try a tactic that has never been used? <coughs> to show people that, friends, it's not about money here. Mm -hmm. It is business unusual. Thank you. Thank you. Let's uh, it's, 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 yeah. 
because he's talking I, about tactic and I wanted I wanted just to pick up from there yes, tactic yes, yes, all no. through the years and and, before, and, and, and tactic all through the years, must not be out so of the order or out of yes. the law okay, can I ask my question please yes, prof before yes, yeah yes. because you have we've been talking for donkey years about this sugar sector no one has been able to crack the whip on this sugar sector it's akin to what Alexander the Great and the, and the Gordian knot that everyone could not really untie that Gordian knot. Yes. Yeah? And Alexander just took a sword and cut the Gordian knot. This is what the president has done now. <laughs> He's cutting the Gordian knot where everyone is looking for where is, where, where is actually the, the loop where we can actually untie it. So what he's asking is, and Kenyans were saying, maybe we need a benevolent dictator mm. to come and streamline this like country. Them, yeah. And yes. Dr. William Ruto is doing exactly that. <laughs> This is what Marcus Aurelius says about what Dr. Galua just discussed. The path to moral excellence is not an easy one, for it requires constant self-reflection, self-discipline, and the unwavering determination to choose righteousness over expediency. What Dr. Galua is uh, expressing here, and you, in a way, supporting is his expediency. I'm not supporting, but I'm just uh, yes, yeah, the question that you putting it on the table for us to analyze. It's actually expediency, okay? And Marcus here is, is right. The president is already the president. He does not have to demonstrate dominance to anyone. He's already demonstrated dominance by el being elected and assuming the office of the presidency. What should worry you is the message to the people who may not be in his corner, and these are business usually because this is issue is about business, however dirty that business is, and you may feel vulnerable, and they actually try now, right now, preparing themselves to figure out how to exit the country. And then the business people who may want to invest in Kenya, but one day, they may end up being the victims of extra judicial decisions. The law is there, Dr. Galua, to create stability, to create predictability. The law is there to guide our passions, control our passions and our emotions in a way that we are predictable, that people can know how the Kenyan government is likely to act in different circumstances. So remember, nobody is saying that the president, what he did, or even issuing this threat is wrong because we don't have the information which he has. All we are saying is there is a different way of carrying out this agenda. And the different way of carrying out the agenda we are saying is not the way he's doing it. The way he's doing it is going to scare both internal investors and external because there is no predictability. Because like Marcus is saying here, expediency is very dangerous for business. Business likes predictability. Business likes a peaceful environment. When we know you are not going to stick to the rule of law, we know that there is likely going to be trouble ahead. Okay? And therefore, money doesn't like insecurity. But experience so in, in, in what context? I'm trying to no, you just know, get in the the, what Marcus is used use experience in what context? Experience in the context, for example, that you see, these court processes take time. Okay? They don't happen in a day. So you may say, I know I'm right. So this nonsense about the court, I'm not tolerating it. I need you out of it because I know, I have information, I know what you are doing. Because a lot of people go to court to simply delay. In fact, they go to court to obstruct the judicial process using the court loopholes so that they can continue doing the evil thing they have been doing in dominating the sugar or doing this. You know, there is a lot of corruption in this country. That is obvious. And the people use the court in different ways. And I have examples. I know some people who cheat you and then you get the police. Then they go and sue the police for harassing them before they are arrested. And the case goes on and on. So the president may have information that what this fellow is doing with his cases is simply using the judicial loopholes to frustrate justice.
Thank you. Let, that thing granted. That thing granted. Let's let's go to have done this thing differently. Right. Let, let's hear from Professor Ogola. We'll come to you. We'll I just want to respond to something, and then Ogola can take us to the next level as a professor. Let me let me just mention to Prof here. We need to appreciate that the president could be responding, and I do not deny, it depends on what you are looking at. One, I am <coughs> talking from a lot of experience of the Luya community. I have been the treasurer of AFC Leopards, I have been the vice chair. I have dealt with those people very well. I have worked in the sugar industry for a long time. And you need to appreciate there is the perspective under which that he was talking. And you know here, seated here, we are referred out there as what wa kizungu mingi. Vitu kwa ground ni tofauti, and I'm calling myself as part of that because that is what we are referred to. Things on the ground are totally different. When you go to West Kenya Sugar Company, and you see how they pack the sugar, uh, the, the cane on the truck, compared to any other factory, you lose more than 40% in terms of even transportation because of those little things. This president is speaking from the community that is so pained about the sugar woos. And they know who the problem is. They know who the government has been using to do things. And it's not just about right, by the way. There is a serious cartel that is out there that has always been there. So I say I agree with what we are saying. I agree there is law that must be followed. I agree the president must be operating from a certain level. I also seek us to agree that there is a different way that you must deal with things which have previously been dealt with the law as it were and that you need to get things done in, the, in a different way for the good of the community. All right, thank you. Prof. Yes. My take is that um, the, the president's statement, let us just first of all be careful about this thing called the Constitution. The president's statement is a violation of human rights, especially he makes the Bill of Rights look a little bit useless and, in fact, threaten life to uh, right to life, threaten, uh, if you like, the access to justice, threaten what's called independence of judiciary because taking someone to jail is not the work of the executive. It is the work of the judiciary sending you to jail. Uh, also, it's a threat of life to what's called legal representation. And so all litigants will do their cases now. If you're a lawyer, you're dealing with that case, isn't it? You had already been given a fee. I'm not saying we have to add money, isn't it? But now, there will be a lot of threats there. Of course, again, <coughs> threat, the, the threat to what's called the independence of the bar. Uh -huh. So, that very thing takes away so, so central thing that it doesn't matter what you are solving. If you are solving a, sh a, a sugarcane issue, and actually going against the Bill of Rights, which is the constitution which he was sworn with. Mm -hmm. For me, that is so fundamental, that should not be negotiable. And then uh, also, uh, you're talking about the issue of how people are learning bad manners. So, mm -hmm. you know, my son, who is five years old, listening to the president, he believes that if you are corrupt, you should go to heaven. Because, see, uh, those who are fisadi were in the Benguni. No, it, it is God who decides who goes to heaven and who doesn't go. The president is even becoming as more powerful than God to determine to God who needs to go to heaven. I'm sure. For me, these things are very reckless statements that does not represent a head of state. And I can tell you, maybe, uh, Kirwa, when I was a young boy, we used to learn Kiswahili from Moi. Because as a young boy, we believe the head of state is the most qualified person to speak in English, to speak in Swahili. <laughs> so when you are doing a grammar test... You run it by what is it? Yes, yes. <laughs> because you see, <laughs> but who, who is the most qualified person in Kenya? It's the president. Yeah, exactly. So, when, already there. so when, you listen, when you listen to the president, the president has to know that there are some very vulnerable people in a village like Kugenya or Siaya or in Turkana whom the only information they have is listen to what the president says. So according to me, we need to have a bit of some decorum there. Then as far as I can tell you, the issue of corruption. Corruption looks like whether, whether, where everybody complains about and nobody really wants to do something about. Mm -hmm. If it is cold, put on a sweater. Why are you saying it is cold? When it is hot, of course, now you have to work with the fan. I'm sure there must be other solutions. According to me, the sugar problem was there in Brazil before Brazil sorted out. 
Mm. We are dealing with a problem that is a solution. Uh, corruption or the issue of sugar industry, it's a problem that has a solution. It's like a disease like malaria, there is always prescription for malaria. The disease like cancer, where we are still looking for a, a treatment. So that one is, is, is not a cancer. Corruption, when I see people, corruption, corruption is a cancer. No, corruption is not a cancer. Corruption is just like malaria. We know the pill. The goodwill, the political goodwill to solve the issue is not there. And I can tell you, uh, Divan, if you are a head of state that hates corruption, everybody around you who is corrupt will side run away from you. Yes. But if you love corruption, those around you, uh, around you will be corrupt people. And I was telling Professor, if the president believes that Wafisadi should go to heaven, should go to jail or leave the country, let him start from himself. Uh, himself. How clean is he? Next one is Gachagua, isn't it? The third one is the ministry. If you look at the ministers of Kenya Kwanzaa, I, I was looking at the picture I was taken and posted by Walo in Kakamega, and you look, you count from left to the end, and you ask yourself, which ministry can I trust to do business with? There's none. All these guys are either incompetent or corrupt. Uh, some of them are struggling even to prove they have certain degrees. Look at replacement. Uhuru Kenyatta had uh, Professor Magoha as his minister for education, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, after that, we have a minister who is struggling to prove he has a master degree. Now, I'm asking myself, are we advancing as a nation or are we going backwards? <laughs> If a minister for education had got all those qualifications Magoga had, then after that he placed him with someone who is struggling to prove. Now, if you are a young man like me growing, and you see your minister is Magoha with all those qualifications, don't you desire to study? But if you are a young man growing, and your minister is struggling even to prove they have a degree, do you get inspiration? So young people are realizing that there is no need of studying. In fact, people are realizing education is becoming expensive and also it is valueless. But the, the, the uh, uh, here you have very qualified people. Uh, these people could serve better to sort out the sugar issue. But the person there, Linturi, Linturi in charge of agriculture. Now, let me ask you if you are sitting in New York, you are sitting in London, in Paris, and you want to put money in the agricultural sector, how do you talk with Linturi to understand what you want to do in that ministry? Me, I'm trying to say that incompetence is the issue. Uh, by the way, when I heard people saying that we need to have inclusivity, Professor, I'm telling people that for me in Kenya, there's one most important inclusivity, not tribal inclusivity. We need inclusivity in competence, not tribal. Because the Kenya Kwanzaa do not have the inclusivity in competence. You can bring some people who are thugs, you can bring people who are unqualified, but at least have one or two people qualified. Now I heard Professor saying that the people next to the president are not helping him. Let me ask you, who in that cabinet knows anything more than William Ruto? And appointing incompetent people is a strategy. It's a strategy. Be it's a strategy. If we appoint incompetent people, you have people who can only praise you but cannot question you. Look at the speeches there from Musali Amdavadi. Hey, hey, praises. They're just praising and pampering him. No one can question him. It's another strategy to appoint incompetent people because if they try to oppose you, you remember them, <coughs> remind them how incompetent they are. For example, if you am a CEO and I appoint you the head of finance and the company rules is that you should have CPAK and you don't have. So anytime you criticize your children, you do you know that you are not even qualified in this position? <laughs> it's, a, it's actually and a favor. Yes, it's actually a favor <laughs> that you're here. And more use this thing very well. And I, I agree with you, uh, Moshimiwa. Yeah. Do you know Bernard Chunga was a CJ in Kenya and had no law degree. Yes. And do you know why? Bernard Chunga was a St. Mary's old boy like myself. Now let me say that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> in in, in, in St. Mary's Yala, we used to say, shine in everything, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Bernard Chunga was the best mm -hmm. student in English in the year they did KCSE. Ah. And because of his very good English, Moy deployed him to help magistrates and lawyer and, and judges to draft, uh, let's say, rulings. Mm -hmm. And by drafting rulings in all judges, he knew more about judiciary than the judges. <laughs> and he had no law degree. <laughs> so Moy appointed Chunga to be the chief justice. 
So anytime Chunga oppose Moi, Moi told him, do you know you don't have a law degree? So <laughs> <laughs> having incompetent people around you helps you to manage them. Because if you are very competent people, do you know Magoha used to tell Uru Kenyatta, you have a Zekani. And with this qualification, you can say it, isn't it? Mm. Yes. Now, Machogu cannot tell a PhD holder, William Ruto, I was a minister for education. I've appointed you one of the education, isn't it? Linturi cannot tell him, Aisha Jumwa cannot. So I'm trying to say, having incompetent people around you is a strategy to manage them, but also to ensure that you can get away with anything. Mm -hmm. And they don't help you. Mm -hmm. That's my point. Right. So, yeah. No, no, no. Let, let's hear from uh, <laughs> just, 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 just to give him a starting point, uh, <laughs> Dr. Galua. Starting point this for is also Dr. Andy Rosso, huh? uh, the French philosopher, says about so. authority. He says, as soon as we abandoned our own reason and they are content to rely upon authority, there is no end to our troubles. He couldn't have replaced that, uh, the reason with the law. Mm -hmm. As soon as we abandon the law mm -hmm. and we rely on authority, there will mm -hmm. be no hand to our troubles. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you know, yeah. <laughs> that is a strategy. Yeah, let me begin there. That uh, the ball, it is important that when you want to change society, you change from the top. And uh, anything a leader says will permeate the society so fast that it becomes part of the culture of that institution. Now, if we go against the law, against procedure, against the processes, we are actually telling even our children and any other institution that you do not have to apply the procedure because it's tedious. You know, procedures are there to guide you. Uh, procedures are there so that if you deviate from procedure, you are now audited and you are told that you have deviated and therefore you are reined in. But if you say there is no need for procedure, there is no need for court process, there is no need for some kind of mediation, because there are other ways that you can achieve the same without going into a court of law. You can do arbitration, mediation, or any other way to deal with some of the complex issues in the sugar industry. I would have expected the president to be telling the people of Western Kenya what he's doing about the fact that land size has reduced whether rice there or not, land size has reduced that is available for sugar and for operation of machinery. Uh, what, what was he telling, what would he, be? I expected him to be telling them that we shall now be harvesting sugar cane timely. What Professor was saying earlier on that in Brazil is six tons to a, to, to a ton of sugar and uh, Kenya 14, bucks, 14 tons to a ton of sugar is because at times some of the sugar cane that we have is instead of 18 months is 48 months it has stayed until it, mm, the sucrose content has gone down why it is because of corruption i pay you you have a my sugar which is 18 months uh, somebody like a uh, professor does not pay you you allow your sugar to go to 24 months 36 months and even 48 months Thank you. these are some fundamental issues but what worries me is the culture the president is creating mm -hmm. by giving roadside shows is a culture that we should be running away from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. regardless of whatever heals the, the other people. Have, have, right. Have, have I think you've, been, be, you've done a good justice to, to that particular topic Let's as well. Close it at this point, uh, we close it. Uh -huh. uh, to say that I want to imagine, and, and I totally agree with my panelists. Totally, I only always want to see the other side of things. And uh, we are talking of an industry that billions of Kenyan money has been written off in terms of debt to salvage the institutions. I want to believe it is more than 100 billion, which is Kenya's tax money mm -hmm. that has been put, it's 160, 161, 161 billion. I want to know Money seven, that we have paid taxes, billion. 171 billion. And it's much more. That is all that has been captured. Mm -hmm. We are talking about money from the outgrowers company, which would take it even to 300 billion that people have lost in one way or another. And if you add in the pain of the people from this community, including Sony uh, on the other side, it's a lot of money. It's billions of money. And we need to ask ourselves, where does this money go? Doesn't this money go to pockets of people 
Is this not the money that has bought <coughs> houses in different places and money that has been misused in matters of corruption? And the farmers <coughs> are the ones who are crying out. I can't imagine, I'm just figuring myself as President Ruto in that place, the discussions in the room, mm. what we are suffering from, our children, cries, land, and people saying that tunataka kungoa hii miwa yote kwa sababu wa itusaidi when it is about the purchases, trucks and tractors are bought at exorbitant prices and all these kind of things. So it's trillions actually in money. And the president is speaking and, and, and we should not just take the president on the issue of Rai because it's not just Rai. There is pain in him. There is information that he has that we may never have. There is much more that is making him as a president to cry for the people of this community to be able to take this subject to a different place. And we need to start thinking, how are we going to deal with these things that are perennial? Is it not the time to look at our constitution and start thinking of what we can do? Because they cannot be solved at the roadside level. They yeah. cannot be solved just by the law that we, we, we imagine that we have. There must be a different way. You have seen even today, churches are supposed to be churches and leading in the best way possible. Out of moral guidance of the, 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 the Bible, the Quran, the, the, the Gita in the religious institutions, but eventually, they have gone out to create a code of conduct right. which they believe we'll come to should that. guide the, the, the institutions. The institutions, yes, and self-regulate. Maybe, maybe when you're talking about Machogu, because Machogu as well has been to the Education Committee and is proposing that legislators should think of bailing out the universities, the public universities, because they, right now they are in, insolvent, mm -hmm. so to speak. They're in the red. Yeah. And he says the 61 billion shillings, that should be written off by the government and the question that we've been asking is if we continue this culture where we are bailing out Kenya Airways we are bailing out uh, Kenya Power which is a monopoly at the end of the day we will not even talk about uh, the blackout that happened uh, this week as well and uh, incompetence in terms of uh, making sure systems operate uh, you know uh, with stability that has adversely affected so many people even lives have been lost uh, there's a couple who lost a child because uh, in the ICU uh, you know, there was no power at the end of the day. Should the state universities that are insolvent be bailed out? Well, it, let me tell you. Um, okay, it is your prof. You oh, go. Uh, let okay. me tell you, bailing out is always a way to co do corruption. Let me tell you, even the one on care, when there's an article I wrote, why they even wanted the issue the KAA to acquire, um, to enter in a partnership with the Kenya Airways, is that they wanted the money that was liquid from Kenya Airport Authority to come into KAA. And you could see some people buying shares just before that happened. They brought the value of Kenya Airways down. Then they were buying shares of Kenya Airways so that when that money comes, mm -hmm. they gain shares and then sell. So the government will bail out where they know they are going to make money. Mm -hmm. This government is a government of dealers. Anytime anything is happening, there is a deal going on. Even this public university, I've been a professor in Strathmore for 12 years. Maybe let me correct your statement when you said I'm a professor in Strathmore because maybe Strathmore can be annoyed. Uh, <laughs> it's on public that Strathmore sucked me, so you get this clear. Mm -hmm. So they sucked me on Holy Thursday, uh, which was on 6th of April. So Holy from Thursday now... It's about only Thursday. Yeah, I think that was not a okay. really, it was okay. not really a holy day for me. So it's just good because you now some people can get offended if I yeah. take that I'm still a professor there uh, okay. because I'm not a scammer. Mm -hmm. I, I'm very far from scamming. I'm a church boy. Uh, St. Mary's Yala graduate, and we are very clean people, just like Magoha, you see. So, <laughs> so the, the main point here is that the university, if you look at even the funding structure for the university, we are going to court, by the way, mm -hmm. to challenge the funding structure of, of this because uh, we say in law you cannot apply uh, a blanket. Uh, ways to deal with people who have different, uh, who have uh, materially different circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if there was no help the way it was before these guys are trying to disrupt it, yeah. some of us could have never gone to school. And I look at what needy, more needy, more, you vulnerable. know, those things. Vulnerable. No, vulnerable, vulnerable yeah. needy, needy, less in the th those, uh, those parameters are difficult even to come up with. Mm. And then also as a scholar, 
how I got my scholarship to do my PhD abroad, and it was a good PhD, was not meant on my neediness. We cannot always put money depending on needs. Also, we have to consider talent. For example, if you focus on giving money to someone who is needy, mm -hmm. and you are not putting money on people who have got talent to do what they need to do, mm -hmm. you might find that uh, we might actually not incentivize certain talents which are in the country. Mm -hmm. Secondly, what are the national priority? If you go to the US, UK, they fund according to national priority. If mm. they believe that ICT is key, for example, in Kenya, 62% of the Kenyan GDP comes from the first service sector, which is banking, insurance, media, and many other things. But are we putting money where we need to advance? We, have, uh, we are putting money where priorities are not. And then thirdly, how comes if you believe that you'll use the funding method by looking at my background or my parents, you give me money, in help, my brother got 40, 45,000 shillings from help. We have the same mother, the same father, we are born in the same place. Me, I got 37. My sister got 27. So are we having different parents? Or, or how do you assess the neediness? Mm -hmm. I, and I could also tell you, I did a disparity study last half time with help, and I found out that some children from Western Kenya were getting something doing 37,000, while the same people with the same equal, uh, equal qualification or circumstances were getting more from some regions. Mm -hmm. I can tell you even the very health, uh, the, the very structure of funding of Kenya, there's corruption. And I can even tell you, and um, let me just allow me to debate a little bit, just but on the same funding. Mm -hmm. Now, Sakaja was there speaking how we need to fight cartels and corruption in, West, in Kakamega, where the president was, eh? Do you know Sakaja has bought a house in Beverly Hills in California after being governor? And he has bought another house in Runda. They are all in the, in the media. Now, he was saying that immediately somebody is sworn in, somebody goes to buy a house in the U.S. Is this how we should spend Kenyan money? And that is the president's friend. I hear some people saying he can be a presidential candidate. And if he becomes one, that says come. So Kenyans need to have a lot of civic education even to digest what the leaders are saying. But that has been on social media. We cannot, uh, <coughs> it's not a confirmed fact. No, no, but fact. I'm saying, it's I'm not, saying. Not, not, just, just for, for me whatever being is, risk that what, on this podium. Is, yeah. I have some intelligent information to prove, and you can take me where I can prove it. I'm telling you, he's bought the house. And Beverly, uh, Beverly Hills. That Beverly is one Hills of the suburbs. In uh, California. Uh, yes, this is where the, the, the rich of the riches stay in the U.S. Now, how should Kenyan money be taken to Beverly Hills? Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to say is that corruption is a big issue. All this funding being created, Ruto is restructuring all funds. Now, help is being restructured. NHF is being restructured. As, as, I, as, as Mwishu, I just said, it is looking for somebody is eating there, and if I leave the structure, I cannot eat. How can I restructure these funds so that my people and myself can eat? I can tell you, in the sugar industry after this, uh, court cases and the riot wars and the rest, you'll find that Ruto will be the real cartel in the sugar industry. NHIF, it was entrenched with other people, for example, Kibaki and U U U Uhuru. Now you want to take up NHIF, you have to structure it. And now look, they are talking about the issue that some should be about a, a chronic, some should be about acute. It's like, I will ensure up this is your head have another fund then your leg will have another fund then your stomach another fund why should we just ensure you with one fund whether it's your leg your neck or your stomach these things are just thank you uh, uh, duplications and the confusion he wants to bring because we say for you to win a game you have to change the rule of the game mm -hmm. so ruto is changing the game so that he can win the game because the game he found in the structure he cannot win so he has to structure that's why all mm -hmm. funds are being restructured they restructure even the fund for media if there is only to control them and that's what i'm trying to say for me it is wrong and we should follow the right procedure right let's say from people you are at risk uh, oh. Oh. you're at risk oh, uh, yes. uh, let me let me say this uh, uh, at risk no I've, I've, yes. I've already told him that he doesn't yeah, have yeah, any confirmable yes. facts yeah. mm -hmm. yes yes but, <laughs> yeah. but he has repeatedly that. said it that he can he no, can no, prove he, he hasn't discounted so all all that i just want to say is that when when we are here mm -hmm. uh, we we and i respect my uh, good yes. friend prof D Dubai, that we I, just I, be careful yeah. prof just yes, allow me yes, to, yes. to speak 
uh, that we be careful that this can lead to litigation and it can mess up the organization and anything else. Yes. And also for us, just to be prophecy, you are in my list. So, so just taking that responsibility, I think, is a good he has thing already done for, for our own self. Yes. Well, we have asked him to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so he party. says he has intelligence on that. He uh, seems yes. to really know yeah. better than we do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, on that particular note, but we've had also cabinet secretaries that we know, and it's been in the public uh, domain as well, who are donning a 45 million watch yes, uh, and brother. it's not even been barely we wonder what why, uh, why hype, the money hype, where is the money really coming from mm -hmm. uh, we know where you are coming from yeah uh, previously yes. so I don't know if you won a, a lottery that uh, sometimes was not really public <laughs> uh, yeah and we are living in this country yeah. and we know how the clammy fingers of yeah. corruption has been in this country as well we want to circle back because now we are due for